You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, the AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and Bing.com, and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's Game of Thrones After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. If you'd like to buzz in on tonight's show, you can buzz us at 424-256-1729. That's 424-256-1729. Two five six seventeen twenty nine, and now another post game wrap up show for your favorite TV show. It's After Buzz TV's Game of Thrones After Show. Woo! Yeah, I'm joining yeah. that screaming too. <laughs> guys, I'm so excited for the Game of Thrones After Show because Bing is for doing, and we're doing. Storm of Swords after show joining me all the way, all the way across the table, so far away. <laughs> double lovely ladies tonight, Sarah Stratton. Hello. And Kristen Snyder. Hi guys. And guys, I'm Dave Klein, and joining us in the booth, we have Marissa. What's up, guys? And guys, I just want to <laughs> jump into this because I am seeing things happening. I'm seeing the show start building, the cogs are working. And let's go ahead and start out the way the show started, which is with Bran. And we start out with him in a dream, and he's running, and he has legs, and he sees this three-eyed raven that we saw, I believe we saw all the way back in season one, if I remember correctly. Yes, we did. And we finally start getting an explanation for it, but what did you guys initially think when you saw the kid who's standing there? Who ends up being Jojen? Who ends up being Jojen Reed. I mean, I felt like I was so creeped out. I felt like we were, like, entering into some ghost, creepy territory. I had no idea that he was going to be a live flesh and blood human. I was thinking he was some supernatural force mm -hmm. that we were only ever going to meet in this dream world. So I was really excited to find out that it's this whole new intertwining of just these two people having sights and the, the sight, and we're getting more explanation. And we're diving into, you know, some deeper, more magical topics. That was such a great intro, too, for him and his sister, Mira, because I felt like as characters are coming into this, sometimes we don't always get a, the best intro and we kind of forget their names, but that's kind of hard to forget. That whole scenario was pretty amazing, them coming in, and I didn't know who he was. I didn't know whether I should trust him or not. But I also thought he looked a little bit like a Theon, a young Theon. <laughs> he did look a little <laughs> like Theon, actually. Yeah. But when I was watching the dream, I, I was like, oh, my God, that's definitely got to be Jojen. And um, I was kind of uh, intrigued to see how they were going to introduce him. Because in the books, he would actually have been introduced in season two. And he actually ends up helping uh, Bran. And he's in um, Winterfell as it falls. He's helping them escape. He's there a lot. So... I was curious to see what they were going to do when they introduced him, and I like the way they did it. They actually make him seem a lot stronger than he is in the book, and a lot... He kind of seems super nerdy in the book, really. I mean, <laughs> like like a super ultimate nerd, which is fine, but that's his character, and he has his sister, Mira Reed, who takes care of him, as we find out in the show, but she's really... She's the hunter-gatherer one, and he has these mystical dreams, and he's this sightseer, and all he cares about is that. But he, um... We had their entrance, which I, I enjoyed seeing. I liked the way they did it. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad he's not a nerd. I was getting the very, like, you are mysterious, yes. powerful, silent type, and everyone helps you vibe. Yeah. Not I, the, like, nerdy, mm -hmm. like, hello, <laughs> help. Well, it's just, it seems like all he does is he's just, like, he's very stubborn in the books, at least, and he, all he cares about is the dreams, and he's, he's stubborn, but he, I don't know, he came across to me as nerdy, like, in that, in that sense, really, he did, but... I do like the way they handled him, and I like his character. He is much stronger here, and he's kind of leading Bran through and explaining to Bran that, Bran, you're a wizard, Bran. You're, he's that Bran is a warg. <laughs> I just wanted to do a Harry Potter reference, guys, because I love Harry Potter. But um, that he's a warg. So he ends up introducing him to that and letting him know that he's a warg, which basically means that Bran will be able to control Summer, his dire wolf, will be able to see things with this raven, and we finally find out the meaning of it. So Bran, even though he has no legs in the dream world, which is the real world, he has some pretty amazing powers. 
Now, can he see, I know they were talking about the rebellion and stuff that you could see a long time ago before you were born and also things that are going on miles away, but can he see anything into the future? To me, it seems, I mean, I'm not sure because I'm not up there in the books yet, but I feel like it's a training environment. Like, you get stronger, you get better, like, you can learn to control it. And for me, just a little side note, I was like, to me, I'm going to throw out a reference here, too. It was like X-Men, and he's, like, sitting in his <laughs> chair, like, with all this mind power. Um, but also, another Professor side Xavier, note. y'all. Exactly. <laughs> Throwing in the other references here. Um, I was just picturing that this new, like, Mira... Um, sister brother relationship reminds me of Bran and Arya where like mm-hmm. you know she's like the tough warrior type who wants to go get it and I'm like I just picture them being great friends they can all be friends together and have this like four person reverse gender stereotyped gang yeah yeah well to hit on what you're talking about Sarah it is kind of this whole training thing you're, you're pretty much spot on with that where Jojen wants to help him and train him and help him out and as he was talking about his vision that he had he had this dream of helping out Bran and Jojen sort of can see into the future. That's his thing. In in the book, it's called Green Dreams that he has, and that's what they are. So he can kind of see into the future, whereas Bran has these amazing warg powers that hopefully we're going to see develop throughout this um, series, or at least this season. So they both have different powers in that way. Yeah, they're slightly different in what they can do. But Jojen is there to help him out, and Osha, not too trusting of him there. Nor should she be. You know, I liked that she was very protective of him and was willing to lay down her life for him. Obviously, It's funny, when that. you first meet him, it's such a stark contrast where she's basically willing to murder him and kill him, mm-hmm. or do something to him when that first meeting, and now she's his protector. So, it's kind of, it's fun to see the way she's just completely turned around, and now she cares so much about him. Yeah, no, I agree. But let's go ahead and jump on talking about another Stark, which would be Rob. And Rob is with Talisa, not to Lord Karstark's enjoyment. So Rob's hanging out with Talisa, and they get the news back from Winterfell that the Ironborn have sacked the city and left before, and they kind of escaped before the city was retaken, before it could be sacked. So Catelyn's upset, but they do get the news that Bran and Rickon couldn't be found. So at least there is that hope there that they might be alive. It's not just... They're dead. I mean, I feel like Rob has more of the hope. He's like, well, maybe they took them as prisoners, but you have Cat over there being Debbie Downer. <laughs> Just like, there's no ransom. They're not... So, which I didn't expect. I thought it was going to be the other way because we've seen Rob be such a strong, like, strategical figure who really seems to have his head on his shoulders. And the fact that he wouldn't be going to, like, the worst conclusion, I don't know if that's coming from some lingering support of Theon and thinking that maybe he's not capable of this. But to see Kat be the one who was really depressed and just not seeing any good light in this was interesting to me. Yeah, I, I agree with that. But he, um, with Talisa, she's sort of an interesting character there because he was supposed to marry the phrase. And we're kind of seeing Lord Karstark's not happy with it. And I, I believe Lord Karstark's the one whose child was murdered by Jamie, who mm-hmm. has now escaped. So Lord Karstark is pissed off now that Jamie's escaped, and now he's pissed off at Rob because Rob is married to Lisa and broken his oath. So he and basically he, straight up says that he thinks that Rob has lo- lost the war the moment he married to Lisa. Right. Love always seems to mess up things, doesn't it? <laughs> I mean, I don't still, uh, I don't trust Talisa. Yeah. I, I think that she's there, sort of like Shay. I'm not, I trust Shay more, obviously, but just as a comparison, I feel like they both have different reasons for being where they are that we're not quite sure of yet. I mean, Talisa, wh- where did she come from? What That's is she doing? That's so interesting to me because that thought never crossed my mind really? at all. Like, I literally thought it was such, like, true love. Like, she was... Because she started by helping all of the wounded men and not mm-hmm. bowing down to him or saying how great he was, but standing up to him and being like, hold on, you're killing innocent people for some war that doesn't even cross their minds. I mean, like... They don't know the little details. They're just told this is what you're supposed to do for loyalty and for honor. And so I had never thought of her being, having these ulterior motives. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. I kind of just suspect that everyone here is playing a game. Yeah. I mean, you have to. And what game w- is that? <laughs> <laughs> just, just a question to get out of it for a second. Uh, who do you guys think is playing the best game right now out of all the players? Oh, my goodness. Not even who's competing for the throne, but even, you know, maybe Talisa. Like, who do you think is playing the best game right now? I think for as little power over her situation as she has, Sansa, like, mm-hmm. is doing the best. Because she literally, she has no army. She has no 
like she has barely half a slave friend like she has no one and mm -hmm. she's surviving under next to Joffrey who's a monster as she says and the fact that she's alive and trying <laughs> to find a way out and making these random other friends I think that's pretty successful. Yeah, she's doing well. I, w I would say Marjorie only because, as we can see today, I felt like her whole wanting to go hunting was a foreshadowing to the future when she will completely take over and there may be a hunting accident. And, and like, Cersei totally sees it in Marjorie as well because she's, you know, questioning Joffrey and do you really love this girl because she's dressing like the poor she's i can see it in her like clearly Cersei knows what's going on but marjorie man she's playing joffrey you can see it in her eyes i can see her plan i think she's winning at this point she's definitely playing a game i'll agree with you on that but i i i don't know if i agree with everything you said i mm -hmm. feel like she is going for this power but i feel like cersei is more jealous than thinking that she's on the wrong i think cersei's like you don't deserve my son like I'm so high and mighty lion mm -hmm. I don't see it as a I see it as a threat of Cersei doesn't like a beautiful woman around mm -hmm. but not as Cersei thinks that she's that um she has someone threatening to take over the throne yeah, yeah. I think I just not think, a snow white then <laughs> but she's, she's gotten so close to the throne out of all the players and she's doing it right under his nose so in that regard that's how, why I think she's doing the best what about you Dave um, I'm going to say I think Lord Tywin's probably doing the best job right now, even though we haven't seen too much of him, but I, I think he uh, he knows his stuff. And I also think, um, again, she's not too much in control, and even though in today's episode we saw it, it get handed to her, I think Arya's been doing a great job. I think mm -hmm. that she um, she knows what she's doing, and she's pretty smart about it. But um, let, let's finish talking about uh, Talisa, because I, I love the conversation she has with Catelyn, and I do want to talk about that, because... This is the first moment that we have Catelyn talking about these regrets with Jon Snow. And the first, she's so cold towards Jon Snow the whole time. <laughs> I did that on purpose. Oh, <laughs> couldn't tell. Um, so she is so cold to him the whole time that it, it was nice to see this moment from her where she she's very human and she realizes it's just a boy and she's being jealous over the situation and she's treating this kid so poorly when he didn't do anything wrong and I, I just really like this story that she told to Lisa. I think it's amazing that she thinks it's the karma of wanting this child dead that's bringing on all this bad you know luck to her family that's what I think is amazing that she's just gonna blame it on her not being able to actually do her part of exchanging with the gods because they always say that you know ask God for something, but don't do an exchange. You know, people always say, if you just do this, I'll do this. Most of the time, you're probably not going to keep whatever you say anyway. And clearly she didn't, and now she thinks that this is karma, which is a really interesting part for me. Yeah, the conversation gave me mixed emotions because I was glad that we had the knowledge of that and we saw some sort of connection and admittance on Kat's part that she had been a bad person. And so I wanted, it was weird though, because I wanted to be mad because I was like, you still did it. You still had him for years and years and years and never showed him any love. And you admitting that, does that really make it better? Mm -hmm. I mean, you said it, yes, but where is he now? Oh, he's on the other side of the wall in the midst of danger. And that's kind of your fault, so... Well, it's kind of that case of, like, I, I guess now that she's lost all of her kids, all the bad things have now happened to her, and now she's filled with regret because bad things are happening to her. Whereas if things had been so great and grand, she wouldn't have cared. So, I mean, obviously it's because bad things are happening to her. But it's still nice to see her having that moment of humanity with him. Mm -hmm. To me. And what, what was it called? She, she was making something that looked like a dream catcher. Did it have a name? I'm not sure what that was. It just I'm looked sure like a woven does. dream I'm catcher. I'm sure it There's yeah. so much detail in this show. <laughs> it has a name. I'm, I'm, I, just, I just know it. Somewhere there's a name for that. Do you that, guys know about no the dream catchers, though, that... Uh, mothers put above their children's mm -hmm. bed to catch the bad dreams yes, at night. Yes, and it's so. very reminiscent of that. I used That's to have one of those. I love dream catchers. Dream catchers are awesome. I want one now. <laughs> That's what this has come to. I now want a dream catcher. <laughs> it reminded you of your youth and you just drew from the show. Nostalgia. Uh, <laughs> so, a former Stark, just moving on. Um, a, <laughs> there we go. A, a former Stark, in a way, another one who was raised by the Starks was Theon. And we're seeing that he actually survived everything that happened to him, but he's now being tortured, and they're trying to get information about him. They quote, they want the truth. We want the truth. What is the truth? 
So it's pretty brief what we're getting with him, but they revealed this pretty early because in the book this is far later on that you get this revealed, but Theon is still alive and he's being tortured. So uh, what did you guys take away from that? Utter confusion. Yeah. Um, I thought. What was that thing they put in his finger? Some weird, thick, needle, tiny <laughs> sword contraption. I don't know. I was so confused. I literally was like, I must have missed something in the first episode. Who are these people? Where are they from? Mm -hmm. Part of me was like, wait, do they belong to Stannis? What is happening? Utter confusion. Yeah. Utter confusion besides the fact that he was being tortured and screaming. I mean, I, I figure it's got to be the Ironborn because the sister got her man in there to help him out. Who He doesn't do too much. He just mentions it. But we got in the chat, Simfire hitting us up, Landis, telling us, and we all kind of squirmed at this scene, the knife between the finger and the fingernail was gruesome, but I loved it, says Simfire. Yeah. That's one of those things that's like eyeballs in between the fingernails and then for guys, groin stuff. Like, any of that stuff is really, like, uh, <laughs> that, to me. That going in there kind of reminded me of, like, the male physical, but yeah, not, not going to go there. Uh, but yeah. uh, anyway, <laughs> I really like how uh, Theon, oh, he changed his story when he thought that they were looking for a different answer. Uh, he said that he took Winterfell because he was trying to impress his father and bring joy to his father or whatever. And I think that's honestly the true reason. However, then he switched it to, I hate the Starks and I did it because I've always hated them, which I think he was saying only because he felt like they wanted a different answer to quit torturing him. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, at that point, he's just willing to say anything. He even screams out, I'm, I'll say anything. <laughs> but I mean, I, th I wonder if it's just a case of like, if it is the Ironborn doing it, if they just want, they favor people who are strong. They favor people who are, that, that's their thing, just people who are strong-willed no matter what. So I, I figure the fact that he changed his story is a thing of weakness to them right. that they would not like hearing. That's even, a great right. point. Even if it was a lie, I think they'd prefer hearing that story to his death than anything mm -hmm. else. I agree. So uh, let's uh, let's jump on talking about a little bit of King's Landing because we've got a lot going on with King's Landing. Um, and we were talking a bit about Sansa and Marjorie there trying to play the game. And we start out here with Joffrey getting fitted, not too happy about the flowers of the Tyrells <laughs> being put into his um, his wardrobe. The big decisions. Big, big decisions. Big, big kingly <laughs> decisions there. What is important there. in King's Landing is that there are no flowers. Well, Joffrey makes all those kingly decisions. True king. But, um, what a king. But he uh, he's talking to Cersei, and Cersei... Wants to know what he thinks of Marjorie. Hey, hey. What do you think about that little lady? Ah. Uh, I clearly, so. I really think he does like her. I agree. Marjorie. He has and, a crush. Yeah, he has and, a huge crush, and Cersei doesn't want that, and he's hiding that from his mother. Well, it's funny because Cersei comes off like she wants to talk about it in a nice, sweet, motherly way mm -hmm. here. And I don't think Joffrey necessarily picks up on her intentions, which I agree with you guys. I do think that Cersei doesn't like her, but I don't think Joffrey picks up on any of that. He's just kind of, he kind of is like that teenager boy of like not wanting to talk to his mom about it. like, oh, this is boring me. Because I think it's more just like he's embarrassed about it. Exactly. I, I also, because he was saying, you know, all the reasons why she w she's the right choice and not because, you know, he really cares about her. That's also very his character, though. Mm -hmm. All he ever thinks about is war and talking about that, too, which is very much who he is. But do you guys think that he does actually have a crush on her? Because I think that's what he was trying to hide through this whole conversation. I think, I think he sort of had a little bit of a crush, mm -hmm. and then after the scene with the crossbow, <laughs> oh my god, talk about turn-ons. Yeah. Girls holding crossbows, what's up? You, wanna kill, <laughs> you want me to kill somebody in front of you? Man, that would turn me on too. That's but, how you get people nowadays. I felt like she was making fun of him uh, to some degree when she was like, oh, you squeeze something here and then you see something over there die. That must be pretty exciting because what's more exciting is a battle and fighting an animal or whatever it is, like a man and courage. Yeah. So I felt like in that way she was kind of making fun of him, but I, he didn't catch on. I think she's just playing up whatever he wants to hear, and that's it. it is. And I just love every time we see Joffrey with a crossbow because he just loves that crossbow. That's like his <laughs> baby. Like He loves that thing. And to me it's just kind of symbolic of how he is like the fact that she pointed that out like all he does is pull a finger and guess what everybody dies yeah that's how the show is operating he does nothing he's not swinging a sword at anyone mm -hmm. he has no honor it's just he just thinks things switch. should happen for him no mm -hmm. matter like people just need mm -hmm. to obey him no matter what it is there's a lot of symbolism in those words yeah. I, I love that scene that, that was, was a great scene yeah i, I, I felt it 
Nice performances. <laughs> nice. Snaps for you. Nice play, Marjorie. Nice play. <laughs> <laughs> so we got his former betrothed, Bisanza, who, who's um she's gets to breathe a little bit of sigh of relief, but she's hanging out with uh, Shay, and Shay does not trust uh, Littlefinger at all because of what she's been told. And it makes a pretty big promise to Sansa, saying, if he tries anything, I want you to tell me. And basically, like, promises to do something about it. Pretty pretty big promise, I have to say. I mean, I think Shay, Shay comes across like she would do anything. Mm-hmm. She doesn't give a funk. But <laughs> I like that. <laughs> nice. I would definitely agree. And she also, she brought up some other ulterior motives, which, I mean, obviously, that sounds is a beautiful girl. And maybe Littlefinger, you know wants a little something something it says it's like appalled and it's like no it's because he left my mom but yeah. like what did you guys think about that and what are his motives or is he gonna betray her does he really want to see her safe is there any love there i'm i'm all ears because i really don't know what he's thinking I feel like having her on beside him is a is like having an, a someone else's piece of a game so having her beside him is never a bad idea, and he will use that. Maybe he'll use it to f- f- for Catelyn, to get Catelyn back on his side, and he'll pretend it's for good, but in this world, no one's really good. <laughs> <laughs> Ned was really good. Ned, oh, I miss you. Oh, what? We got the Ned? voice. <laughs> we had Arya's voice really good. back this episode. Did you guys hear it? Uh, in the dream. In the dream yeah. in the beginning, his <laughs> voice came back. Sorry. Such a soothing sad. voice. So... I, I think you got some great points, Kristen, with that. And I think um, a lot of it you really have to think about in the terms of that, the game and the fact that even though Sansa and the Starks are in rebellion right now, Sansa's a pretty high p- chess piece right now when you think about it because she has whoever she marries, anybody that she could be with, if Starks the Starks stop rebelling, anything happens, they're still a major household. And that means that someone marries Sansa, Rob gets screwed somehow, you got a piece of the Starks right there in your family. And it's the same thing with Marjorie and the Tyrells trying to marry um, the Lannisters. Those two families come together. Someone's getting a lot more powerful. So it's just combining power. Lots of love going on in this world. Lots of love. This is the medieval way. That's what you did <laughs> back then. You would marry people off for power. Then that's really that's what people did. But um, we I have. I think we're still doing that. Continue. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you watch, uh, you're watching a lot of Shaws of Sunset, I guess. <laughs> but. Uh, we got Lady, uh, or we got the Queen of Thorns. Speaking of which, wondering because she's talking about how stupid she is, and I love this character because she just says whatever the hell's on her mind and does not <laughs> care. I love her character, and she wants the truth about Joffrey for Marjorie. She just wants to know. And were you guys surprised that Sansa told her and let it out? I felt like that was a bad move. I mean, I questioned what the motives were behind that. I thought it needed to happen at some point just for some movement and it was interesting and I want to see if she becomes a friend to Marjorie or if this is just like, oh, just a little bit of information. We really don't care about you or what happens to you. We just want to know these things for our own personal, you know, strategies. What I was curious about was who doesn't know that Joffrey's a monster? Who doesn't know that? Well, there's there's tales, but they don't necessarily mm-hmm. they want to hear it from Sansa. And they want the truth because I mean the Tyrells also haven't been there. Keep in mind, right? They've been over with the Renly Baratheon the whole time, so they are only just getting there and finding out. They weren't there to witness Sansa practically getting her clothes ripped off in front of the entire court. Like they they didn't bear witness to that. But um, I I felt like the Queen of Thorns had a power over Sansa, and that's why she did it. Because at one point, Marjorie was like grandma she's feeling this way and then the grandma used her voice and like soothingness to like calm Sansa into telling them I almost felt like she was compelling her in a way to get the truth out of her we have Devin Lamar on the chat chiming out saying that his favorite part of book three is the queen of thorns and that she's awesome and Simfire says I can respect a woman who knows cheese goes with all meals (laughs) (laughs) but I I think um with the queen of thorns and Sansa I was kind of sad because in the books Sansa plays it a little bit smarter because Sansa has been trained at this point to know you can't trust anybody and she doesn't want to say it and then the Queen of Thorns pulls out the 
their court jester, Butterbumps, I think is his name, mm. who's this fat jester <laughs> who the Hashin starts singing and bellowing out a song so Sansa can tell just the Queen of Thorns and nobody else will hear just to make sure. That's pretty cool. Which was a nice touch that I liked, and that's the only reason I throw it out there. I'm trying not to throw out too many tidbits from the books, but that, that just was a nice touch. But, um... It, it was surprising to me even then that Sansa's telling anybody because she's been so smart about not telling people her true thoughts because this is a dangerous place she's in right now. Yeah, that's why I felt like she, Queen of Thorns had some power over her. And I think that the Queen of Thorns also, for me, gave me a lot of background for Marjorie mm -hmm. and seeing that, like, this runs in their family, this whole women oh, yeah. in control. Yeah. That's a great point. Thing. The men, not, not, kind of, not too much. But, I mean, Baratheon <laughs> took over Robert, but still... Not to, or not that wasn't the never run. That was a Brathy, not a Tyrell. But yeah, Loras Tyrell, not not too much. I mean, <laughs> he's, he's a great pretty. fighter though. He's a great fighter. He's a One great of the best. woman. And he's a great Tyrells woman. are women. But they are the Rose. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Hot Pie also chiming in saying that the Queen of Thorns is awesome. So before we move on from King's Landing, I do want to talk about Shay with Tyrion and. She's getting a little jealous there when they're, they're talking about Roz, where she found out the information. And actually a lot more jealous over Tyrion just mentioning that he knew Roz than I thought she would. Yeah, and then she gets jealous over Sansa, him even saying that she's a beautiful girl with a beautiful face. I mean, I think Shay was playing. She's a confident woman. I mean, us girls, we kind of have to do that sometimes. <laughs> we have to be a little, we have to pretend to be a little jealous, but we know we're, we're the better catch. Yeah, oh, sometimes you just have to you know, make it seem a little fiery. Yeah. Keep people on their toes. Exactly. Just yeah, make bring out a little bit of jealousy. Make them. We know what we're doing. That's all I'm gonna say. Man, that <laughs> makes me wonder a lot of things. <laughs> but something that I don't wonder about is how often and how much that I love exercising. I know I'm sure you guys do too. Cause look how lovely you guys look tonight. Oh, Must yeah. exercise all the time. <laughs> and guys, there's a great way to exercise and make money at the same time, which is the National Academy of Sports Medicine, which guarantees you'll land a job within 90 days of earning your personal trainer certification through them. It's a job within 90 days of being CPT certified, guaranteed, or your money back. But you have to visit usatrainer.com today. And right now the fitness bo industry is booming. There's tons of money, like six-figure money that you guys can get by doing it. And if you become a personal trainer, you could even train one of us. I mean, who wouldn't Please. want to train one of these ladies? Maybe Tweet I should be. Me. I'm clearly <laughs> I'm doing the wrong thing. I need to be a personal trainer so I can train one of you guys. And you can even, there's always A-list celebrities looking for personal trainers, so visit usatrainer.com today and get started with a free 14-day sneak peek of our, their fun, fast, and easy online program. It's 14 days free towards your CPT certification. Certification, I said that a little weird. Californication. Californication, <laughs> and a potential six-figure income at usatrainer.com. And again, that's usatrainer.com. My roommate's Ooh. a trainer, and let me just say, he gets the ladies. <laughs> so. I mean, Game of Thrones, big hunky guys, throwing around some swords. You know, we big, like the muscles. Big hunky guys that the ladies like, Jon Snow. Doesn't speaking hurt. Speaking of which. Doesn't hurt. <laughs> who's hanging out at the wall, beyond the wall. He's talking with Mance, and Mance is kind of in this convo with him about um, talking about the wildlings going south. And we get a little insight as to how he got the army going, which was basically just telling them if we don't head south, we're all going to die, presumably because of the White Walkers. It's the curious. only way you can unite people with like seven languages mm -hmm. and moon worshippers and cannibals, you know. I mean, the truth yeah. is everyone in our world is probably going to die unless we unite at some point because we're always fighting each other, so. Is that a North Korea reference or something? <laughs> I don't know, what are you talking about? You know, I just honestly, in every world, that's the way it is. Like, unite, <laughs> or, unite or die. No I just form. play the game nonstop. <laughs> <laughs> just keep keep walking around, <laughs> figuring it out. Don't look up later. No yeah. worries. Yeah, what, I'll, I'll figure something out. It's interesting that he's keeping John so close, and they're having these mm -hmm. detailed conversations about how to gain power. Are you really supposed to tell someone that you're suspicious of how you get them to unite? Are you supposed to give them the tricks of the trade? You got to give them a little bit so they trust you with information, too. I think it's a little, like, give and take at this time. Yeah. I mean, I, I was honestly surprised, too, that Mass was this candid with him this soon. Mm -hmm. I figured it would have taken a little bit longer for him to expose this detail, but uh, he does. And uh, to my surprise, and we also find out that they, too, have a warg, which is, I believe, man, I missed his name, but I think they said Laurel, but that's the name of uh, the, the Ty It was real Terrell. quick. But anyways, regardless, he has a crow. 
Yeah, I love how the whites of his eyes go back and then he disappears. He goes somewhere else. I, I like seeing him too, and I, I like seeing that, again, this magic being brought back that we're getting everywhere. Like before, we saw the giants who were with the uh, wildlings, and now we're seeing that they have wargs too. One thing, though, I was a little interested about was the fact that they made it almost seem a little bit common. Like she was shocked that Jon Snow had never seen mm -hmm. one before. And I wasn't as big of a fan of that. I would, I think it would be more beneficial for it to be rare, for it to be unheard of. Like, they were like, oh, this is our, you know? Yeah. Like, it, they were like, oh, you've never seen one? It's no big deal. I wasn't a fan of that. You I know what I'll tell you is rare? Redheads north of the wall. <laughs> That's true. It's a thing in the book. <laughs> they love those redheads north of the wall because it's rare. They're, they're sun-kissed. I, I like it. I um, just wanted to throw that out there. <laughs> I, uh... Yeah, redheads, you know. That's what's, that's what's up. That's from my mom, because she's a redhead, too. She's sun-kissed. <laughs> how cute. Throwing out those references. So on the other side of the wall, or actually we're still on this side of the wall, north of the wall, We've on the, uh, the end of the crows or the night's watch, we have Sam having trouble walking back, and we've just got him getting taunted, and he's just tired. He just wants to stop and rest, and he just wants to lay down, guys. He just wants to lay down for a bit. He's going through some emotional issues. I mean, I was really proud of Sam. A little bit. Um, I was really proud of Sam when he was like, oh, when John was going to go off on this expedition, he was like, I'll take over his duties, and was gung-ho, and, you know, really happy, and he was doing well, and taking, oh, like, being a strong part of the Night's Watch. And it's sad to see him fall back into this state where people are picking on him again, and he's being referenced as like holding people back and bringing them down which is kind of how his character started and so I felt like we saw him like go up and become like this better guy and he like would flirt with this girl and now he's going back down again yeah. and that's just sad but that's just this one specific character because we do have this friend coming back and helping him out and I mean they, they say why did you run and leave me which we saw in season two I mean they were just scared for their lives and they tried to put that out there like we were just running away you know what he needs? He needs a trainer from US. Yeah, yeah, he just needs a trainer from <laughs> USA trainer.com apparently to get him in shape. But save, it could save your life. <laughs> that that's really what it is. <laughs> but I yeah, I felt bad for him this scene too, but we do have Jor Mor Mormonts coming and stepping up and telling mm -hmm. for him too and sa telling Sam, I forbid you to die. You hear me? And then having his detractor have to keep him alive otherwise he'll get the knife too. I like that. So I like Mormon stepping up, and this is another thing that's uh, very different from the books. In the book, Sam is completely alone when he falls over and collapses, and then his friend catches up with him afterwards. So, kind of a difference there. Just pointing that out. But let's. Uh, the let's... Night's Watch is a brotherhood. I mean, that's what they're there for. There you go. They give they up. They give be. up women, and they're supposed to all be there for each other. Give up. <laughs> give up. So. Let's talk about my favorite character, Arya, because I've always loved Arya. I love her strong-willedness, and she's currently with Hot Pie and Gendry. And this was kind of a fun toss, because it's never really explained in the book too much, that much. And then after last season, when Gendry, uh, or when Arya has all these names that she can say, she never mentions Joffrey to Jock and Hagar. Mm -hmm. It was kind of like all the fans were pissed and going crazy, and people were like, how could you not mention Joffrey? What, is she stupid? And I like Gendry bringing that up. Yeah. I, I took that as a nod to the audience more yes, than anything else. I agree. It was but, a nice wink. Like, Just... we're addressing what you said, guys. <laughs> <laughs> because she could have stopped the war. But then, hey, there'd be no Game of Thrones. And this is also, if she had really said Joffrey, what are the chances of it being realistically capable of happening well there there is a moment or following or there is a moment where he, she says a name to Jockin in in season two and Jockin says like it would be impossible for me to kill that person so she has to change and i think that's when she actually says Jockin hagar is the name that she wants and everything happens but so th it does it is in limits to who she can say but mm -hmm. and he also mentioned something about well, I can only kill them after a certain time. It can't happen right now. So right. maybe if she he, she had said one of those names, he could have been like, okay, it can happen in like five years. Yeah, you know what? <laughs> I, I think that's, that, that's the scene I was thinking of. He, he was saying that he would kill the person, but just not immediately, which I think was Tywin that she was trying to have killed at that moment. So, I mean, yeah, it, it is dumb in a way, but it also makes, I don't know, it makes sense to me why she couldn't. It's not kind of just not feasible, but I like that nod. Yep. So we they have them running into some bandits who... 
shoot arrows at them, which <laughs> the guy's nickname is Arrow. I'm not remembering his real name, but his nickname is Arrow. And we have the Brotherhood Without Banners coming, and they make their first entrance here. And uh, we have Thoris is kind of their leader of this group of the Brotherhood Without Banners. And I really like their entrance. They're kind of like Robin Hood in a way. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. Like these ruffians who don't really know who they're fighting for, except that they're fighting for themselves. And they have this interesting they're really tough but to me they seem really happy like they're just about to go swing down yeah. some beers and well it's robin hood and his merry men i enjoyed yeah, their rapport so. <laughs> yeah i did the too. rapport amongst each other their rapport is great and it really is that merry men <laughs> aspect where they just love joking with each other and when Arya is gonna wants to leave they're like yeah you can we're gonna let you leave until they find out who she is <laughs> but they were just willing to let her go they were really just like hanging out with her chilling with her and they don't care that they figured out immediately they were running away from Heron Hall and they just don't care but mm -hmm. I, I think it's just that cool idea of that you have these kingdoms fighting and there's it's kind of that idea there's got to be somebody fighting for the people and that's what they're mm -hmm. doing they're the brotherhood without banners they're just trying to fight for the people and the common folk and I, I think that's why they're willing to help her out is they're just to them it's one of them they're t the exact people they're trying to help out Arrow's got some mad skills though Oh, They've man. all we seem got to got some yeah. skills. I mean, we saw arrow skills. We got sword skills. I think what? we're getting the image that these guys know what they're doing. Hot yeah. pie is on the chat, uh, excited about the hot pie moment with arrow. <laughs> that was <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> Which was pretty baller. I, uh, arrow is amazing. Great character, and uh, yeah, I just love the Brotherhood. They're awesome. So Arya, Arya gets to chill with all the cool people. Jock and Agar. Mm -hmm. I like Gendry a lot too, and then the Brotherhood without banners are awesome. So she's getting to meet all of the really awesome peeps. What do you guys think of her challenging Thoris? I was pretty surprised <laughs> she did. She, I, I felt bad for her. She's been trained by, um, what was it? I'm, I'm forgetting his name, but she's been taking dancing lessons and you know, trained for how to use. Maybe the that sword. was the problem. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I was sad. I wanted to see her use her skill a little bit more of a fight, but she's. She is like a 10 year old girl, so honestly, yeah. she's gonna get overpowered by. But I love that she's always standing up there and trying, always the first one out to like counter someone to speak her mind, and she's been really consistent with that. So, you know, it takes some takes some guts to pull out a sword on the leader of the Brotherhood. Yeah, yeah. I mean, she just wants to prove her skills, but I, I do, I love that moment. But what did you guys think about the Hound coming in? I. And recognizing Arya. <clears throat> I, I didn't know what was going what was going to happen. I didn't know if he was on her side, if you know what he was going to do because he swayed from here and there, and now who knows like who he's with really. And I've always felt like he had a soft spot for Santa, so, so maybe I. that carried over to her sister. But I mean, first of all, I also wanted to note that I liked how they mentioned they only could get him because he was drunk. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, this yeah. needs to be addressed. Um, <laughs> but I. I mean, the moment we saw him walk in, we knew she was getting called out. Like, they, we just knew it. She yeah. can't... I have Littlefinger. She could get away from mm -hmm. Littlefinger, but you can't get away from the hound. Littlefinger just plays. Mm -hmm. But uh, from Simfire in the chat, pointing out that whole Arya moment, that it, it's Serial Pharrell is the name of the guy who I couldn't remember, Serial Pharrell. And um, also, good points that... She, uh, Simfire points out that it's been a while since Arya practiced with the sword and that she's also not carrying needle. She has a way bigger sword than she's used to, way more. Uh, powerful or heavy, I would say. It's much he too heavy for her. Needle was a small sword. Kind of uh, a weight difference makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. So, Serial Fro was actually interested in coming on After Buzz, so I'm gonna have to tweet at him and see if oh, he's yeah, in town. Oh, yeah, that's right. We did it. Yeah, mm -hmm. I remember that. Yeah, let's yeah. get Serial on because Serial is awesome. We'll do some sword dancing in studio. How about it? That'd be so exciting. <laughs> I really want to learn. I'm not kidding. So, I let's talk about um, Jamie Lannister and his trip with Brienne not not giving her the easiest of times really kind of giving her a really rough time taunting her constantly kind of flirting with her though in a way as well right it's all just a game you know a what game to get a sword in his hands I don't know like I, I guess this is from my book perspective in the books 
he constantly is from his perspective goes she is so ugly isn't it like he thinks it he doesn't say it and like i can't believe she's even uglier looking when she does this it's <laughs> unbelievable that now she's even uglier like constantly in this scene i'm just throwing that out there we I don't get any of that in, i still think he's in love but i mean i, I did predict in season, the end of season two that i thought they would end up falling for each other so mm-hmm. i'm just saying i just want to throw that out there that that's what his thoughts are i feel like time. he's quite impressed by her time and time again I feel like he has to be impressed or else he's just an idiot. Mm-hmm. But I do not see the love connection <laughs> at love all. Love connection. It's happening. No. He's in love with his sister, remember? He mentions it all the time about how you can't choose who you love and yada, yada, yada. I'm about to drop a pretty horrible word here. But as he himself quotes, it's the war for Cersei's cunt. <laughs> that is a Jamie Lannister quote. It's a quote from the show. But, I mean, when you think about it, really the entire war and everything that's happened has spawned between the incest between the two. Everything. Because that was the push for Bran to fall out of the window. That pissed off the Starks. That's everything going on with Joffrey being alive and the Baratheons being pissed. So everything really did spawn from that. So just remember, it, don't like your sister. Except for Only the, war will happen. Ex- <laughs> except, for, except for Daenerys and the Targaryens. We didn't see... She's, that's, that is the one thing I'll throw out there. But... Uh, Jamie just doing anything she can he can to piss off Brienne and try and get her to drop his guard so he can grab her sword. Grab one of them. Grab luckily, one of them. Luckily, she has two. Don't yeah. worry. I'm not sure why they do that either, but you know what? She clearly defeats him, but I felt that was a really dramatic moment, and I didn't know which way it was going to go. I mean, I was interested because they still left you things to the imagination because, I mean, he had his hands changed, chained. So yeah. she won this one, but what's going to happen if he good has point. these yeah. arms? And really I, I love that point, too, because he does still, at the beginning, he was kind of besting her with two with, um. I mean, he had to hold it two hands, but with his hands chained. And she does end up on top this time. But um, we got Pat on the chat saying that he was a little disappointed with the sword fight, thought it felt kind of slow. Mm-hmm. And you know what? It was a little slower than I was imagining, too. But I guess when you're, I don't know, it, it was. Even Those if, things are heavy. When things are slow, it adds suspense, no? Not yes. when you're Jamie. Jamie just <laughs> likes to cut through things. It's art to him. It, I mean, that's kind of his thing. He loves swordplay. It's art to him. He loves it. That's true. But he presents with her this great conundrum, and, and he does it a lot more in the books, too, but just this idea of, like, I'm presenting you with this problem where you either have to kill me or I'll kill mm-hmm. you, but, and Brienne is super honor-bound, but if you kill me, all of a sudden you have betrayed Catelyn, who is who you are honor-bound to right now, what are you gonna do? Yeah. Injure. <laughs> yeah, Name. That's kind of what I think. Just like injure him. But at that point, Top an his injury. Arm off. He can live. But at that point, you know, an injury is deadly because they're you know wa- on foot to King's yeah. Landing and infection and whatnot. Hot Pie points out that the that he thinks it was kind of realistic that it was slow just because Jamie's sort of rusty now because he's been in prison for so long or in ca- and he's weak. being held captive and he's weak from not pro- presumably not eating enough. And just walking the, this whole time, but Great we have point, hot pie. we have a uh, Bolton, the men from Bolton riding up, and at, as they're fighting, making this giant scene on the bridge. And it was this man that I, I, I didn't mention earlier that we saw this random man who recognized Jamie. Jamie realized that mm-hmm. man must have recognized him, and Bran refused to do anything about it because she's kind of she's nice. She doesn't want to hurt somebody, and now comes back to bite them in the ass because she claimed he was just an innocent man. Yeah. And, I mean, it shows you. People got ulterior motives. I feel like Jamie being by her side, well, she'll learn from him. I think this is actually good because even when they were fighting, he was giving her, you know, some advice about her fighting. So I honestly think that they're going to be friends by the end of this adventure. Yeah, I, I think that's a – it does seem like it's forming if that way. If not lovers. Oh. <laughs> oh. And I, do, I do not agree with this. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to think it's important to explain something with the Boltons, um, just because this was something that was a lot bigger in the books, because it was actually Lord Bolton who Arya was the cupbearer for during season two in the books, whereas Lord Tywin in the show. But it's just important to point out that Jamie's having this interaction with them, and when they bring up that they're with the wolves, it's a big point. It's even bigger so, because the Boltons were actually initially bannermen for the Lannisters. They, so Jamie would have seen them and trusted that, as he says, just take me back to my father and you'll get a lot of money but it turns out that they are with the starks and that's even bigger because again in the books it's explained that they used to be lannister bannermen but they are now stark bannermen they've flip-flopped on sides do you know why 
um, it was sort of just a, well, this side's losing, so let's join up with this side. Mm -hmm. Like, they just flip-flop for the sake of staying alive and for, I mean, they're kind of just the bottom of the bottom in terms of, like, cutthroats and being horrible people. Mm, so but China now they've Patriots. got some powerful chess pieces themselves. Yes, they do. I think that's do. referred to as Sunshine Patriots. You're only a patriot to your team when the sun is shining on them. Oh, I haven't, I don't know, that's not the term I think of when I think of it, but mm. I guess that works. What, okay, let's we'll take it. <laughs> All good. No, it's just killing me because I can't remember the term that I always think of. But uh, yeah, so yeah, they only root and support the guys who are the winners. Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and jump on some news and gossip. After Buzz TV News. All right, so we have some awesome, huge news, double huge news. And let's start off by saying that season three's premiere was the biggest numbers for Game of Thrones so far, better than any before. Which is so exciting and awesome because not only is this the best show on television, but that also means that they have already renewed it for a fourth season. Pretty oh, awesome! Right. Like to be so <laughs> One episode in, and they renewed it for the fourth season. Awesome. I love it. I don't blame them. I cannot wait for more Thrones awesomeness every week and more years to come. But, Sarah, you have some really crazy news and gossip for us. Well, I was just reading, you know, because it's <laughs> what I do in my free time and search Game of Thrones. But big news with the actors' real lives. And one of the stories I was reading about is just about the actress who plays Cersei is dealing with some financial troubles. So you would think, I mean, she's on this huge show, obviously so many fans, as said, fourth season. But <laughs> according to what I was reading, she has less than $5 in her bank account right now. And it stems from the fact that she's getting a divorce and there's a big legal battle going on. Horrible, really sad. I'm, I do not envy that. And I guess they're battling over something like $46,000. And that's not a lot either. Yeah, that's not even that much. And so she's she asked the court for an emergency $6,000 just so she can like help her like little kid out. Like they're an emergency fund. She is on a huge show. She is a lead and this woman has less than five dollars in the bank a lot of times when we hear about that with celebrities people wonder how could they be broke it doesn't make any sense a lot of times it's really not drugs which people think it is a lot of times it's really child support and paying child mm -hmm. support paying for the divorce because you still have to pay for your spouse if you're the one who's bringing in all the money so it's a lot of things like that that make this happen but it's sad that's that's too bad to hear and i i wish her the best and i hope everything works yeah. out definitely hope all the game of thrones family is like there to support her and mm. no love know. no love no love in this world. No, no. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> the Game of Thrones world is a harsh world. So before we get to predictions, I do want to talk about your guys' comments because thank you guys so much mm -hmm. for commenting. Um, I, f and actually, before I get any comments, I should say, guys, that we do appreciate your support any way possible. Please go to YouTube. Please go to iTunes. Rate us. Comment us. Positive or negative, it doesn't matter. We just want your support, and we just want to know how we can make the show better for you guys. So even if it's something negative, we will try to take it into account the best we can. And if you guys want to, you've heard me interacting with the live chat, go to AfterBuzzTV.com, and you can join in on the live chat, and that is at 9 p.m. Pacific time, midnight Eastern time. That's all right. You guys all stay up that late, right? Yeah. Totally. So come join us, hang out with us on the live chat, and we'll definitely be interacting with you guys. Yeah, and so, you can sign in with your Twitter or Facebook. I saw some people asking questions about how you do it, but if you just go to the website, it's right there on the right-hand side, and you can click to sign in with your Twitter or your Facebook. Yeah, and I'm always on there, so if you guys want to interact with me, you can check it out and interact with me, and I'm on with my Twitter, or you can even just sign on as a guest if you guys want to and not have to worry about that. But let's get to your guys' comments from YouTube and iTunes. So iTunes, I want to thank... C Mantelope for commenting. Thank you so much. And on YouTube, thank you to Inorganic Angel Rosal or Rossell. That's an awesome name. Vance Davis, Nath King, Regan Maker 175, Polly Love 37, 16 The Joker, Omar Om Amara Gatha, Kyle Foster, who joined us a lot last season. Kyle, thank you. Buddy. I miss you, Kyle. Miss <laughs> Lane, Dylan King, Gassitep, Tony Stark. Yeah, Iron Man watches us. Unak78, Schmidtarian, <laughs> Rebel Leader, Jamie Wade, Evan Z90, Miss Gigi Jen Jen, kind of like Joe Jen. Joe Jen, a little <laughs> bit. Jalad Wino, Jelly for 69, Charlie and Westeros, David Morning, Envel0916, and UK Stevie. Thank you guys so much. That was a lot of names. Thank you guys are you. awesome. You guys yeah. are awesome for commenting. And Omar Gatha says, Danny is going to get her army of robots. <laughs> robots, Game of Thrones style. 
I love mm -hmm. that comment. And the Unsullied kind of are like robots, I'd have to say. Mm -hmm. Heartless, and heartless beings. So not no only no love, no love at all. Not artificial intelligence <laughs> yeah. robots, just regular robots. <laughs> they sort of, they pretty much are robots. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, we're getting magic and robots in this world, mm -hmm. basically. It pretty much is an army of robots and pirates. Don't forget the pirates and pirates. <laughs> it's the best of all worlds. I mean, yeah, pirates with the Ironborn. I mean, well, they're more Vikings. They're Vikings. Um, nah, nah. <laughs> it's uh, the guy not. Davo Seaworth's friend, whose name's blanking on me, he's, mm -hmm. he is a pirate. He's kind of a pirate. Yeah, type and of guy. Um, th we kind of got zombies. Davos is a smuggler. And zombies, too, with the and white And we got walkers. zombies. We got everything. We got everything. The show has everything. What do you want? We got it. No got love, it. though. No love. No, except for love. <laughs> Tony Stark, I, I do want to address this for you, Tony, because you were asking us about it. Uh, the Shadow Baby song that we often do. <laughs> Someone suggested it to us in season two in the comments section for YouTube. And that video got deleted because of audio issues and reposted. That was where we got it from. We tried to credit the person who gave it to us. If it was you, Tony Stark, thank you so much. We're sorry because of technical issues. And no, we do not <laughs> actually have it on iTunes. We were just joking around. So feel free to make it and put it on iTunes. We don't have it on iTunes. He was really upset. He's like, I'll come for you if not now, later. Yeah, so... Tony, Look, it's, we, come on, Tony. Chill with us. Sing just, with us. We're just having fun, buddy. We're just having fun, man. All right, so. No uh, love for us. No love at all. No. <laughs> we're doing Game of Thrones. What do you expect us then? <laughs> so Jamie Wade says, since book three is two, um, is two seasons. So book three, Storm of Swords, is going to be two seasons. What do we think um, that they'll do with books four and five as it's essentially the same story? He thinks that they might compact it into one season. I'm going to say... They want the money, buddy. Capital Y. They want the money. They're going to make it two seasons regardless. <laughs> and, and I like that because the more episodes I get, the happier I am. So. That's a good point. Yeah, and you know what? I, I really think it, it's not something that bothers me, even though that is the case. I, it's because I think as a 10-episode story structure, Game of Thrones per fits pretty well for one book per, per 10 episodes. Mm -hmm. I don't think they need to rush it that much. I'm, I'm totally cool with it. But. Yep. Um, and something I want to mention, as a lot of you guys are chiming in, I did mess up about the intro of the show. <laughs> I said that Heron Hall and Dragonstone had not been in the intro last season, and I was wrong. I make mistakes, yes, guys. It happens. <laughs> I'm sorry, and Always I do want to address it. Always let him know, though. Let him yeah. know. Yeah. Every, you yeah. your own sword. This is what happens when you make a mistake on Anytime the after show. Anytime I make a mistake, <laughs> I, I'm going to have to worry about my own sword. <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, I apologize for that. Yes, Heron Hall and Dragonstone were in this intro for season two, but um, the other two that I mentioned were not. So... Sorry for that, and I am addressing my mistake. So, let's move nice. on to some predictions. This is where we, we get magical, like Game of Thrones. Very magical. We can't. We're all. We're actually all. Locked. We're Warriors. all green. We all have green yeah. dreams. We're all warriors. We all have green. Dreams, <laughs> and we all have green dreams. So let's look into our green dreams and see what's Tell going to happen. Tell you what's up. But I know, so I don't want to do okay, it. Okay, okay. Clearly Snow, you know, somehow got on the bad side of Mance Raider because they're throwing him off the wall, and they're going to see if he flies. It looks <laughs> like they're throwing him off the wall. Let's see yeah. if that crow flies. I like that, though. They always do a lot of things yeah. with the previews to make it look like they're going to do something to tease it, and then they don't. But we do find out from the season that the previews, it looks like Daenerys will be buying up all those 8,000 robots. Mm -hmm. I mean, Unsullied. But we do see that coming. So it turns out she's How willing to she, have that. I'm wondering, where'd she get the money for this? I'm confused. We saw it at the end of season two, after Zaro Zoan duck sauce, as we're going to call him, <laughs> after he dies in his vault of nothing, all of her um, blood riders raid all the gold and treasure and everything and presumably take it on the boat with them. But I thought that they said, maybe I'm mistaken, that it was enough to buy them a small boat. So... I mean, it's a lot of money, and there's also stuff that, um, in the books, the guy who, I'm blanking on his name, but the guy from season one who's always been helping her out, that fat guy, the, um, who he, are he's you a smuggler. About? He's a smuggler at the beginning of season one, and sorry guys, I'm, I'm dropping the out on his name. Is it something like that? It's not pi pre, but it, it's, thing? it's no. the guy from the first season. It's, oh, you, we yeah. see him, he has mm -hmm. Varys, and he has, uh, Daenerys, and he's kind of taking care of them. In the the guy who gives them the dragon eggs? Yeah, the guy who gives them mm -hmm. the dragon eggs. At least in the books, they, he also gives them a boat. And they're sailing across on the boat. And he's a smuggler and he's rich. And he has all this money that he's given them. And they decide to use that money to try and buy the Unsullied. I, I'm thinking in the show, though, since we didn't see any of that interaction, it really is they just ended up having enough money from raiding everything from Duck Sauce. Maybe they'll explain this next weekend. 
Plus, when you think about it in the show, the entire 13 is dead, so they could have taken everybody's money. Yeah, good point. She's so. got producers behind her. It's all happening. She's got blood riders, baby. They just Financial like to take money and pillage. So She seems to be buying them. She's got everything. And I don't think she's parting with any of her dragons, so I don't think that's a trade or anything. We will see. Something I really liked that they said this episode, I think it was Mira to Osha. She said, some people will always need help. Doesn't mean that they're not worth helping. I thought that was really nice because a lot of times I feel like in this world, people constantly need your help um, and, and maybe you get sick of it. But I really like how she defended that her brother by saying, you know, some people are worth continuing to help all the time. Yeah. I felt like that was really nice. I totally agree with you. I think that's your Nice quote. homily of and the show. There's there a lot of great quotes, and I just love, I think that we're seeing a lot of pieces start to come together. Last week's episode was a big exposition episode. This week was a lot of exposition, too. But you can kind of see that it's going to come to some huge collision, which I look forward to. And guys, finally, before we go, I do want to say that for you who asked us questions about what the season held... I would love to answer those questions, but I don't want to spoil the season for people who haven't read the books for you asking about certain things in the book. So, like, The Red Wedding, I know you guys had a question about that. I don't want to say what my prediction is with that just because I'd rather not ruin anything. They We're trying to be as spoiler-free as possible. They can tweet you or yeah, direct message If you guys you. tweet me. And, guys, speaking of which, once again, um, I am Dave Klein, and you can find <laughs> me on Twitter at the Dave Klein. That's K-L-E-I-N. And, Definitely, if you guys have questions, tweet me. Um, Walking Dead people did that, and I love responding to you guys. So definitely tweet at me. You got questions, you have thoughts, and also try to read it out on the show. Or go to my website, djk-online.com. Kristen. <laughs> I am Kristen Elizabeth, and you can catch me on Twitter at Cinematic Escape, or you can bing my blog, Cinematic Escape. I'm Sarah. You can catch me here. I'll be here Sunday. You know. We got the White Walkers. And swords. We're killing them. I have nothing. <laughs> Here you. <laughs> Wait. And books. <laughs> and books. And books. Bye, guys. From See you next Bing. week. From Bing.com, executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later! The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.